This video is just one part of a complete set of videos under the heading of Making Effective Selections. As you can see by the subheading, this video is going to take a look at just a few selection essentials, those things we're going to need again and again. Selections can be thought of like masking off an area you want to paint, or maybe protecting an area you don't want to paint. We use them to allow strategic editing of just selected parts of our image. Perhaps we can think of selections in two different categories. There's the simple, which we can create quickly and easily, and of course the more complex. Complex selections are not something we're going to require that often, but we do need to know how for when we do need them. Simple or day-to-day -day selections are going to form the majority of our use by a long way. Simple selections rarely need precise accuracy or they wouldn't be simple, but although a selection may be quick and easy to apply, we mustn't lose track of the importance of them because the impact they can have on our images can still be quite significant. How accurate we need to be with the more complex selection is going to depend on the content of the image, how fussy the subject is and maybe the background too. It's going to depend on what project we're working on and what we need the image for. For example, if we're preparing a high quality large print, then our complex selections, should we need them, need to be pretty good. But if we're just working on a small 6x4 web image, then perhaps we can relax our technique just a bit. So let's look at just one or two selection essentials. The first thing we need to know is that many of the selection tools are grouped together. Whenever you see a little icon at the bottom right corner of any of these options, if you click and hold, you'll see that a pop-out appears and we've got a number of selections within it. Whatever one we select, if I select the elliptical marquee tool, that will remain on top until I decide to change it. I've been using Photoshop for about 25 years now and the two selection tools that I find myself using more often than not are located just here. If I click and hold at the bottom here we have three tools, the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, which are the two I'm referring to, and we also have grouped with those two, the magnetic lasso tool. Let's just quickly look at the lasso tool. Sometimes I call this the freehand lasso because we can just quick and easily make a freehand shape. One of the things we ought to know once we've created a selection is once that selection's made and as long as we've still got a selection tool selected from the toolbox I can click inside the selection and I can move it and sometimes that can be quite useful to position a selection a little more carefully. If I go back to the selection tools and I select the polygonal lasso this works in a slightly different way and as soon as I start to create a selection you'll notice that the original freehand one will disappear. So with this tool as I click I can leave what I call like an elasticated thread. I can move a short distance or a long distance but it doesn't get anchored in place until I click. So as you can see click, 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 click click and when I go back to the start I can join up my selection and you can see the shape we've made. Now although this particular tool makes a selection in straight lines you'll be amazed at what you can cut out with this tool even complex shapes. One of the options that Photoshop gives us is the ability to add or remove from a selection. It's not uncommon to create a selection and then want to adjust it a little bit. Well we have a series of options right up 
at the top left. The first one of those is called New Selection. So with this one checked, whenever I click onto the picture, the original selection is lost and we can create a new one. But with the next option checked, I can add one selection to another. And now you can see I've got a little plus alongside my cursor. So if I wanted to add a little more here, I could say, well, I want a bit more over there. And you can see how I've been able to add one selection to another. It follows that if we move to the next option, this one subtracts from a selection and now we see a little minus sign alongside the cursor. So here I can actually remove a selection. So I could say, well, I want this bit all removed. And you can see how we can adjust a selection once we've created it. The last option up at the top left is we can intersect with a selection. In 25 years of using Photoshop, I don't think I've ever used that, so let's just step around that and concentrate on probably the two that are most useful, which is add to a selection and subtract from a selection. And if we were using those 100 times, I'm going to suggest that probably this one is going to be used more often than not. So I tend to have this one checked all of the time when I'm working in Photoshop. But as you see, it's quick and easy to change. The other thing to bear in mind is if I make a selection using one tool, I can select then another tool. I can select add to a selection. So I can add to my polygonal lasso tool now with a freehand selection. Now there is one other very important thing that we need to know about selections and to demonstrate that I'm going to go back to my elliptical marquee tool here. I've got the new selection icon checked because I'm just going to draw an oval shape over my image and now you can see why it's quite useful to be able to move this around and you notice that little pink line there, that pink line is a smart guide and it's helping me to place that selection squarely in the center of the frame. One of the more important additions to making a selection is being able to feather or soften the edge of that selection. Now let me quickly demonstrate that by selecting white as my foreground color. I'm going to pick up a pretty standard brush and if I start to paint into the top left corner, nothing happens of course. But as soon as I move inside of the selection, we can see we're allowed to edit the image. Well, that's what the selection is doing. It's isolating just the center portion to allow editing to take place. But you can also see that rarely are we going to need an edit that has such a sharp edge to it. What I'm going to do here is hit Control Z to undo my painting. What we'll do as well, I think, we'll inverse the selection because sometimes we're going to want to affect the center of the image, but here we may want to affect the outer edge. So we have a menu at the top of the screen called the Select menu. We'll find a lot of selection options in there. If we go up to that, the one I'm looking for is this one, Inverse. When I select it, you'll see now the selection appears around the outer edge as well as the oval. So now when I start to paint inside, of course, it's the inside part that's being protected. But as I move outside, that's the area I can edit, or in this case, paint. So I'm going to hit Control z once again, because we're going to soften the edge of our selection by feathering it. Now because I selected a brush just a few moments ago, the option that I need to take you to is now not being shown. But In normal circumstances you would have selected the elliptical marquee tool from the toolbox here and you would have made your shape and then inversed it. Now at the center top of the screen 
we've got an option called Select and Mask. There is an option to feather a selection over on the left as well. I tend not to use that. I tend to go straight for Select and Mask. Now when I click to open this, it looks a little bit complicated on the right hand side and something rather odd has happened to our image. Don't worry too much about this panel at this point. We have a number of different ways to view the selection we've just made. I'm going to take you right up to the top and I'm going to select that for most of the time we're going to work with black and white. So I'm going to select that and there you can see the selection that I've made shown to me in black and white. The tool we're really interested in here is this one here, the feather. And because it's in black and white, as I move the feather to the right, you can see the effect that has on the edge. Now that's actually going to affect the selection that I've made. So let's select quite a nice broad feather here, a nice soft feather. We do have the option to change what we're going to do but for the moment let's just output to a selection which is what we just created with OK. When we go back in of course nothing looks any different at all. What I'm going to do is flood that selection with white. White is the foreground in our color picker and we're going to use a shortcut key. There's two shortcut keys which you may find are important enough to write down and learn. Alt Backspace will always flood our foreground color, whatever color we have chosen, and Control Backspace will always flood the background color. I'm going to use Alt Backspace and you can see how we've added that vignette to our rose picture. If I hit, because one thing I haven't told you how to do yet is to remove a selection. I'm sure you know anyway, but Control D will do that. So whenever we make a selection, generally speaking, we're going to use other tools alongside the selection tool to help us to make that selection. Be that the zoom tool to make the image bigger, to make the selection easier to make, whether it's the options at the top left to add one selection to another or to inverse the selection as we've just done here. But in addition to those and being able to feather the edge we can actually expand and contract a selection and we'll demonstrate that as we go through the videos. We can save and even transform a selection. So once the selection is made we can adjust its shape by transforming it. But I think these options are probably better seen in context when we're actually working on our images with a project in mind. If you're watching on YouTube, take a look at the links below where you'll find a link to the complete video set. And if you haven't already seen my introduction video to making effective selections, that's worth a look, even if you're not interested in selections themselves. Can I ask you to subscribe to my channel below and hit the notification bell so you'll be informed whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.